and welcome, uh, welcome to the world to our new little program, uh, the Great British Sewing Bee All Gathered Up. <laughs> It's an idea that I had um, and, uh, and I wanted to bring Carol in because I know many of our viewers uh, want to find out a bit more about the techniques used in sewing bee, but obviously because of the speed of the sewing bee, they can't give us some of that technical advice. And I thought, well, let's do a little 20, 20 minutes, half hour show um, with someone that can give us those technical advice on, on how to make things or, or the history of a fabric or the, the, the idea behind a dress. And uh, I can't do that, but I know someone who can. And that's Carol Elaine. Thank you, Carol. Stuart, thanks so much for inviting me. I'm glad to be here to talk about the technique of sewing. I'm so pleased. Oh, well, you're very welcome. We we all love the sewing bee. We chatted. I know you watched our programs, our unpicked programs last year, and that's how we got acquainted. And we've been talking ever since then. And you've taught me many of things um, on, on, on previous chats on like the bias you helped me with putting mm -hmm. putting a net band on. But so I sort of thought, well, what great way of, of, um, of jumping on the whole sewing bee and getting into detail. So just give our, our, our viewers a, a, a background uh, of your career, Carol? Sure, sure. Well, I've been sewing my entire life. I remember starting when I was about five and I actually, sitting on my mother's knee, remember making some of the first garments that I wore to kindergarten, seriously. I, I was just enamored with it and I never looked back. But I did take some time out to go to college and get a business degree and I worked in banking for a while. And then I decided to really roll the dice and come to London because I knew dressmaking because I had been at it my whole life but I really wanted to understand the, the finer points and the higher points of menswear in the Savile Row tradition so I moved to London and I never went back home oh I still call it home but I was taken in immediately uh, Savile Row it was a very warm and generous and, and arena at that time and there were no women around and I just remember hearing for the first time one of the tailors said you know your onions, girl. You know, you, you know what you're talking about. I never heard that expression before. But um, so they put me to work straight away. And from there, I got to work in uh, learn men's tailoring, but stick to my couture roots. And, and then soon I was working for Holland and Holland as their bespoke tailor. I worked for Chanel. I worked for Hardy Amy's. Uh, I consulted for many several firms and 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 if I may, uh, sure. you said there, there were many, there weren't many women. Did, did, was that a barrier at all? Or was it, did you find it was just r really, you were allowed to just blossom and, and, and develop? I think being American and not being afraid to ask a question oh. or a dumb question or a smart even, but um, we have that reputation, don't we? We're not, we're not afraid to ask. Yeah. And I just went in, you know, just really humbly but um with sincerely. that enthusiasm as well I yes guess. and yeah. i i really wanted to learn and i so i started by learning to to uh reface um tales for, for for orchestra players you know so that was a job that needed doing and i could do that mm. and then from then i went on and i learned waistcoats and then trousers and then i started to study coat making so i've got that cross training and mm. um and I enjoy the reputation for that, you know, being able to cross disciplines and, and work and, and on couture wear or sports wear. We did the, um, I designed and made the Olympic uniforms for Team Britain for the skeet, uh, the double trap and the skeet team. Uh, so I got involved in the Olympic Games and I've done a lot of work for the Albert Hall proms and oh. um, just really, it's just, it's just been yeah. a, a lovely, lovely career and I'm still learning and I'm still loving every every oh. aspect of the job really. So. And, and oh, here you me. are with us doing Sewing Bee, talking about technique. Uh, I'm very happy to be, Stuart. Oh, well, it's, 
well, I, I, it's great because I, it's, it's the, I think it's the teacher in me as well. I want to learn more. Um, uh, so learning from you and giving more to our, our viewers as well. Because uh, mm -hmm. I know sometimes when we're doing our unpicked chats, uh, we are talking from a really, uh, you know, just a, an, an amateur crafting point of view. Sure. And, and sometimes sure. I just feel I can't give enough knowledge. So to be able to have you on here and oh. for us to have 20 minutes going into detail would be great. So let's okay. go straight into it then. So we sure. have episode one, wardrobe staples, the made to measure, which was all about gathers. And we've got the, the, uh, the first pattern challenge, which is uh, all about darts. Um, a, a, bit, a bit about those two then, Carol. Well, I selected those two because they, they act as opposites in a way. The, the fitted dart, which was, you know, pointed toward the bust point, and that's to, you know, to make sure that that garment sits and falls right into that, you know, the, the, the highest point, the biggest volume there. Um, so that's about fitting. The gathering, that little video is going to be about how to build volume into a garment. So that's going the other way. Oh. So one is about fit and sculpture, and the other one is a sculpture of a different kind, a bigger, a, a bigger kind, you know, the Buffett dress, you know, um, so opposites. So two, two important techniques for a sewer to have in their, what do you call it, an arsenal or in their, 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 their vocab, if they need to stretch yes. or to I expand, mean, gathers is, is the technique to use. That's right. And then, and then as far as the dart's concerned, I would say that aside from the straight seam, the dart is one of the most fundamental techniques to have in your skill set as you build a garment. You know, straight seams and darts, that's where it all begins. Yeah. And I thought, you know, they, they're going to start with something straightforward, which they did, which was the shell top. Yeah. And from the word go, Patrick said, you know, this is a shell top. It's simple, simple garment, but it's got some tricky elements. And then right away, Esme said, it's got darts. <laughs> so, and then she went on to explain why we have a dart, which is to build, you know, a two-dimensional um, garment as a thing to a three-dimensional garment. And that these darts do follow the contours of the body, you know, and they point to the fullest part of this uh, area that you're bringing attention to. And I thought, you know, a dart is an underrated thing. It starts to build sculpture in a garment. And when placed correctly, it, it's just a thing of beauty. You know, it just follows the, uh, the shape, you know. I, so you have yeah, I completely agree. I love a shirt, a men's shirt, and I often see waiters wearing them in a nice London bar, and they'll have those two lovely darts on the back of the men's shirt. It pulls it right in, and it's a figure-hugging look. I love a, love a shirt with darts in. Beautiful silhouette, right? Beautiful yeah. silhouette. And that long dart, that's called a contour dart because it go, it has two points, right. right? So you would sew that from the middle of the dart up to go yeah. up into the shoulder line if it's at the back of the man's shirt. Right. And then the, the fattest part of the dart is at the waist. And then you would pick up that waist uh, position and then you would sew down into the hip. Wow. So then you get that. Yes. You know, Never that's contour vertical dart yeah. and those are always pressed toward the center of the garment so if it's in the back you press those to the center back if it's the contour dart is in front you press that to the center front so that's a little bit of background yeah. on the construction and so so darts we were looking at it out from the point of view of the shell top the focus was obviously the bust i presume yes. so, that's right uh, and yeah. if that dart wasn't there, the fabric, once it went over the bust, it would have just, just come straight down, I presume. So the, so yes. the dart... Yes, and depending on the fullness of the bust, then it would have just fallen forward. It would kind of sloped forward. Right. But the dart brings it back in, brings it back in. It controls the length over the bust. And that dart, the bust dart, you're quite right, yeah. that was um, horizontal dart. Okay. So the construction of that when you're, you're working not on the straight grain of the fabric, like with your contour dart, but you're working more on the bias of the fabric. So that's a tricky dart. It has to be controlled, you know, when you're sewing it. And because it's a horizontal dart, then that would be pressed down. Next to straight seams, darts are the most basic structural element of sewing. Darts are formed from triangle shapes on the pattern with two stitching lines on either side of the central line. The 
darts are sewn from the wider end down to the point. The stitching line should be straight and sewn evenly from the beginning to the point and letting the needle just run off the cloth at the point end. The dart shape is folded on the center line so that the stitching lines are matched. You can set this up with pins. I pin along the stitching line because I find this gives better control because the, the pin goes in and then comes back out again. So I think this gives a better lineup. One final pin just outside the stitching line gives you a marker to aim for. The stitching line in this particular bus dart runs parallel to the bias of the cloth. So this unstable grain is going to need some control. Here I'm starting the dart at the wide end with a simple back stitch and removing the pin. Never run over a pin, even if you're pinning perpendicular. And so straight and even all the way to the end. And keep your eye on your marker pin, feeding the cloth in. Don't work against your machine and let the machine and the needle just run right off the cloth, gradually and gently. When you're finished sewing, tie the loose ends in a double knot to secure your dart. Clean up your front threads, and then we're ready to hand press. Pressing is every bit as important as the sewing, and you should always press as you go. And you can start with a hand press like this, and you can see how we're beginning to build some shape that's going to fit over the contours of the body. I'm going to spend some time on the pressing here by first looking at the dart from the underside of the fabric and isolating the stitching line, folding the center line. And remember, we're working on the bias of the cloth, so we need some control. Using your iron, keep things moving with a light pressure and light steam and work with a circular motion at the point. Turning the work around, I'm going to press the dart the other way, again along the stitching line. And this is good because it teaches you to be versatile with the iron. You're working on your, your, your piece from different directions. Now you can see the developing shape. It's no longer a flat piece of fabric. And here, one final press, moving the iron downward and flattening everything out. Again, the circular motion to the point. Press the entire shape. And just note that your finished dart should always point toward the fullest part of the body contour that it's going to conform to. When it comes to the darts that you saw, I know when, when we were when judging, those 12 sewers were there, it was very quick, because obviously they have to, we didn't really see full 12 in close detail. But with your eye, did you spot any 
Because obviously we we'll, we won't know, but were you going? <laughs> oh, that dart! They probably missed that, or oh, I don't think they've done that quite right. Did you spot any in the time? I of- did. I did. yes, there were several that didn't come off right gradually to the point, mm-hmm. and then some darts I think were backstitched, so that created a little pucker. Yeah. I think the biggest disappointment when it came to working out whose darts were correct and whose were, were slightly shy of the mark was the fact that the the mannequin was a different size to the shell top. So all the darts were lower than the bust point on the mannequin. So they kind of all sunk in. So that was difficult. But at the very end when they were judging and you had um, Rebecca and Serena, I think. That's right, yeah. First I actually, impression. yeah, and I thought Rebecca's darts were beautifully pressed and prepared. She won in the dart category, but the, the, the first place went to Serena. I think because there was so close in finish, but then Serena had done something very clever with the button tab in the back. And I think one of the criteria was about creativity, not just precision. So I think that swung the judges to Serena. And I I remember, um, because we were we were WhatsApping as we were watching, and (laughs) and I remember you saying it's they will probably also be looking at the skill on doing that small buttonhole. Yes. What a tiny very small tab and and you had to sew it in the right the right way otherwise it was a completely different shape now in the sample that they showed you to start with it was it was a long and thin yeah and the buttonhole was going horizontally most of the people did it vertically oh yes i never even thought of that you're right you yeah. are yes the, and the better way would have been what the uh, as the model at the beginning showed us the, with the button going so. I think so although I thought the tab was a little bit long yeah which meant that the button had to be sewn you know a good three quarters of an inch yeah. to the right of that bagging out keyhole so I, I don't know I, I mean either way it, it worked obviously but with the longer button tab then you would have had to be very careful that the presser foot lined straight up with that because they had the buttonhole attachment on didn't they Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. Mm. I mean, I, I've never used that buttonhole attachment. I, that's the whole thing in itself, isn't it? Using that? That's uh, such an awkward contraption. Yeah. But then it does allow you to get the size of the buttonhole correct. But it did, it did bring to mind something you and I talked about previously, which was, you know, you're, you get a, a pattern with a set of directions on it. And is it completely clear? Do we know? I mean, oh. somebody had to run over to one of their comrades and ask them, yeah. you know, how the heck to do that. So yeah. the directions sometimes are a bit misleading, d- difficult yeah. to interpret. So that's why you end up with two different shapes. And of course, we, which we've talked about before, time. When we sew at home, we do it over a period of time and more enjoyable. It's a whole different thing, isn't it? When they put the challenge on, and of course they need the time to make editing to make it exciting to, to for us to want, want to watch, to keep the viewer watching, but it also then changes the whole thing about sewing, doesn't it? It, it does indeed, because it does, you, you know, you have, you've got to eliminate these 12 down to a winner. Yeah. You've got to separate the people that can do this, perform these tasks under pressure. And it is, it's awful. When I saw that, you know, two people drew blood in the first 10 minutes, you know, and the plasters came out. And, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that happens. That happens normally even when you relax, you can just, you know, yeah. misjudge how close, you know, this sharp tool is. But it brought me back, you know, 20 years when I was working like that under pressure every day, the red light was on. It's awful. It's, it's so yeah. destroying. So I now appreciate a different working life where I can work at a slower pace and, and call the shots, you know, because it's, there's no backspace. <laughs> key on a sewing machine no. <laughs> I felt so bad for some of the people that had professional lives you know and they were saying oh I was I studied accounting or this is what I do for a living and I thought yes you live on a computer all day yeah now you make an error out comes the unpicker and there you, and you have to take everything to pieces and now you're losing time yeah. and the pressure's on and then it's no fun <laughs> it's no fun at all um 
So we, you, you pointed out, Rebecca, that's lovely to know with Serena. And we obviously on that same round, we had Julie and Damien at the, at the bottom. Uh, I mean, Damien whizzed through, didn't he? Uh, he? He came across as like, yeah, that's easy. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah, that's, um, yeah, he was pretty cock a doodle do at the front, wasn't he? And, and um, <laughs> he said, in fact, I think I'll slack off now. And then yeah. when it's 10 minutes to go, then I'll finish. I don't want to look like I'm too, you know, accomplished. Then he also said, fake it till you make it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was going to be, I said, um, I think I, I texted Ting, and I think I said, he's, he, he's going to be a pro. And of course, when he then showed it, it was like, oh, damn. Okay, well, um, let's move on to um, the made to measure. Now, the made to measure, the buffet dress, I'd never heard of it, but... Um, it was apparently, that, so they said, something from 2019. Can so you give more about this idea of this dress? It's fairly recent. I mean, I know it as a peasant dress, you know, oh. or just a, a tiered, a ruffled, tiered ruffle dress. You know, and they, they did say that it's a, it's a large, a, a high volume dress with no defined waist. But then there were several in the <laughs> final that had a tie waist and fitted bodice and all that. So. You know, I guess it's it mainly refers to a, a garment that sort of grows in volume somehow, whether it's a fitted sleeve cap into a bishop sleeve or it's a fitted bodice then with a set of tears on that then, you know, increases the volume, the girth and, and the flow. So but and that was a really exciting um, challenge because of the different types of fabric people chose and um and the way they treated the ruffles you know, yes well you you texted me saying there's lots of fabric and uh, <laughs> there's lots of gathers so lots, and, and a lot of fabric to to work yeah, with to control and yeah. i think that was clearly something where some were able to control that well it seemed like like ray for example uh, raf for example on his mustard um Bro broidery, tell, tell me more about this fabric, broidery anglaise. Is that broidery anglaise is, is, a, is a pattern that's, um, that's um, sewn in, you know, with a satin stitch, like a, like a very tight zigzag. Mm -hmm. And usually the, the, the main pattern is built up of, of keyholes, you know, mm -hmm. and then generally it has a scalloped edge, which yeah. is very clever because you can use that as the hem of the sleeve, which Raphael did use. I thought his... His offering was just superb because he mixed, obviously he mixed different patterns of embroidery yeah, anglais. Of he, he hand dyed the fabric yeah. and the lining and he used that scalloped edge beautifully. Also, he, his dress was more a finished A-line shape where mm -hmm. he didn't have a huge amount of gathers in. So right. his gathers were very slight, very delicately controlled whereas you had other i think jean it was had a mile of ruffle in hers yes. um so the winner absolutely i yeah. thought there were sort of four at the end who, who could have qualified to win based on their technique and creativity but i think kind of raphael's was yeah. was street from head from from your point of view uh, and from your background and knowing that Raf is a textile designer, do you think that was influenced from his? Absolutely. Ah, yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. And also he knows, you know, working in film, he knows what things look like. Yeah. You know, he knows what a finished piece looks like on film. He knows how to fill the space. Yeah. He knows how clothes interact with, you know, the actors and the actresses. So yeah, he did have an edge from experience, I think. So tell us about then gathers. How, how do you, because you, you taught me when I was doing that little dress, uh, some basics about gathers. What, what I, I know we're getting, again, we're going to see some uh, footage of you brilliantly yeah. explaining everything, but just give us a background about gathers then. Yes, so gathers, you, you generally have a straight section and then you have a larger section that then you just gather in and then you set that in, okay? You, um, if you gather into another gathered section, that's kind of called a double ruffle Ooh, in a way. Okay. Not in a way, it, that is what it's called. Yeah. Here we're going to be making a ruffle. We're going to be gathering a section with a ruffle into a straight section. You're going to set your stitch length to the longest on the machine 
And this first line of stitches here is going to be some on the seam allowance. So here I'm using a half an inch. Um, I'm leaving a nice long tail of threads here for gathering later on. And then resetting the ruffle in place and sewing a second gathering line about a quarter of an inch away, closer to the raw edge. So once these two stitching lines are in place, then we're going to begin to gather up this section that eventually goes into the straight section. Um, this is relating to the buffet dress on the Great British Sewing Bee in the first, the first episode. So the first thing we're going to do is isolate the, the two threads that are closest to you, the upper thread and the lower thread, and secure the next to the underside to the back. We're securing this thread with a, with a twist, making the two um, threads even and we're beginning now to pull the fabric back and you can see this is beginning to form our gather line. You can work from say the right to the left and stop because it does get a little riskier the further along you get and you don't want to risk breaking the threads so you can see with the right hand I've got some light tension there which um, is just keeping everything in place and as you go along, try to even out the gathers so that you've got a smooth line of ripples. So we'll stop here and then we will go and work on the left side. But before we do that, we're going to secure the work that we've already completed. We don't want to lose progress here. So um, this is just a little couture technique of wrapping the threads around a pin so that you secure them onto that one side which you've got completed. A little bit more adjustment there. You can use your fingers along the way or you can pick up a pin and you can do the same thing to the same effect uh, to further refine the rippling effect that you've got. So once you're happy with that half, we can start the other half. And just once again, you take your top two threads, isolate those from the bottom two twist the two threads together, put a little bit of tension on it, and then begin to pull the fabric away. Now working from the left side to the middle until your rippling line, your gathering line, meets what you've already completed. And again, you use your fabric, your fingers along the way to just refine what you've got. Once you're finished, then you're ready to join this ruffle to the straight section. And you can see here, I'm just pulling the work so that it's all straightened out. So here's our straight section. We're going to flip the work around, tidy up the threads, and align the ruffle to the straight section at the edge. I'm going to start with just a small back stitch, just to secure the work. Remove our pin. Now, we're going to be sewing this about a thread's width, very close to that seam allowance thread. So you're going to be sewing right under it, so that when you turn your work around, there are no stitching lines showing. Now here, I'm going to go nice and slow, because I'm going to be looking to make sure the work to the left is, is stretched out of the way. I'm going to be watching that I'm sewing as close as I can to that seam allowance gather line, but that I'm always to the left of it, about a thread's width. And then checking all along the way that your raw edges are even and that your stitching line is straight. And again, keep the work to your left. Keep that straightened out as much as you can. And keep checking. And you'll see when these two sections come together how you can grow a garment. You can lengthen it and you can add volume. You can add girth to the, gar to the garment with this technique of gathering in your ruffles. And you can see on the sewing bee how those lovely dresses gains all that movement, all that length, uh, using this technique of gathering a ruffle. So we're just about done, 
and you again want to backstitch secure these threads because you've put in a lot of work you've got what you want you don't want to lose any of this so now the threads are tidied up and now you can open up your work with the seam allowance going away from your gathered section turn it around another way so it looks like a dress straight section on top and your ruffle on the bottom all complete would, would so would you say because th this was the made to measure you, th that was pretty much the skill that the judges were were wanting to see can they deal with gathers i think so it that was multi task the, the brief was huge for that because yeah. obviously you had to make it for a model yeah um you had to put in the gathers you had to use a fabric which was going to catch the eye yeah. of the judge. And um, for me, my favorite piece was the one that Jean produced. And Jean, yes, I that, think- That black and white yes. sort of leopard, wasn't it? Or- It, it was just green. stunning. It, yes. You know, it was, and it worked so well on her model. That was yeah. a perfect union yeah. of the design of the fabric, the quality of the fabric, the, the, the tones of the model. Mm. And, and then the, the overall, you know, the volume of the dress. I just thought that just did it for me. It was just so pure and lovely and everything married up. Mm. Um, but it wasn't, it ended up being as striking. No, as, yes. As graphs and, and, and of course the amber beads and, and all that. And I think it was interesting that Esme, you know, there was not much to comment on. It was just so perfectly integrated but she said oh here i go here i go i just wish this bell sleeve was a bit more belly yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it didn't need to be it yeah. it moved anyway and that's because the quality of the fabric was so fluid mm -hmm. where in rafts it wasn't you needed that a line that mm -hmm. indeed that was a bell shape and that kind of just kind of swung from side to side didn't it it didn't mm -hmm. have the fluidity no. that some of the <laughs> other dresses did. It's, I, I had this conversation um, in the show with Ting and Anya. Um, how much do, do you think will be an impact that, where the sewers can't go to the shops to feel and touch the fabric? Do you think that might have an impact on this season? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I've suffered from that as well during lockdown. You know, I've just had to, I mean, if it's a worsted woolen and I'm tailoring, I pretty much know. Mm. Um, and I've got a, books of samples anyway, but if it's a couture fabric, and so often they'll sell something as silk. It's not, mm. right? You, you'll sure. get it and you'll see it's, it's uh, yeah. silk 20%, polyester 80%. Oh. It, it's, it's a blend that's yeah. not gonna perform and, and you can request a sample, but you know, that takes weeks in the post. Yeah. And you know, if you got a commission, you wanna get it in and out and get paid and you don't have yeah. you know, that kind of time. So I wonder if, no, do you think, <laughs> Julie, who ended up leaving, uh, being the first sewer to leave, she'd chosen the broderie anglaise uh, with the white and it had big holes. Do you think that might have been the mistake that online she didn't see the scale of the holes? Probably. Because she had to buy online. Yes. And I did I remember correctly? She said, I've never done this before. She did. You know, yes. never, did that refer to the fabric or did that refer to the task? I don't know. Yeah. But that was if it would have been finished that would have been a prize you know just an angelic beautiful postured yeah. um you know buffet dress but with a fitted quality and i thought what she had done it was well on its way it, it would have really been a beautiful she, dress. she she didn't even get to the gathers so what do you think was the problem there was it because she was spent the time doing the lining to because of the holes Potentially, and I think she, you know, she was she was a slow worker. She had yeah. a very measured way of speaking, a very measured way of working. Yeah. And I think maybe that she just didn't have that, you know, that that speed button internally yeah. Yeah. to say, stop thinking and just move yeah. and just and, get it done. You know, and that's the issue. Well, that's what the program it does, isn't it? That that element of time is what is used to whittle yeah. down to the to the to the ones so um that's brilliant so we've got gathers we've talked about and we've got darts so let's just have a sum up about the the sewers uh the 12 sewers who who, who just, just stood out that you think oh i'm looking forward to seeing them next week well i think we're gonna we're gonna have some surprises 
but the one I'm just going to put my goggles on here because yeah. I, I've got I've got everybody here. But it was um, it was Damien who really oh. surprised me because Damien, I mean, he just went, and I think he would agree. It, his work was quite clumsy, and it yeah. got clumsier with the T-shirt challenge. Yeah, I never would have thought he would have turned it around like that and it produced a perfectly fitting dress on a model who had the figure. So again, it was perfectly matched, you know, the bust line and the umpire waistline of the, the frock that he chose. And then to set the eyelets in, have the center front closed perfectly and find a trim that married up, you know, handled the contrast trim of the front band. I didn't expect that. And so the judge is completely it was just zoomed over. They, we didn't get any yeah. reaction from them, did we? Which is a bit of a shame. I think so. But, you know, it's... I think the person who ended up leaving, I don't think that was a surprise as no. a, for anyone. And certainly as the challenges get harder and more taxing, she might have yeah. found it even more difficult. But you think Damien might be one to watch out for then? I think so, yeah. definitely. Right. Anyone and else? I think, and I think Serena is... She's naturally gifted, yeah. you know? She... She's, she's poised, she says she's nervous, but I, I don't see it in the work. And the, and the other one I think is Jean, because, oh, yeah. uh, because of, you know, she's done some beautiful work, the three tasks, except <laughs> she did get a big giggle in and I've never seen uh, Patrick crease up, so <laughs> felt <laughs> such <laughs> like that with the, the <laughs> pussy dress, you know. <laughs> I wonder if there's something a bit mischievous about Jean that she yes. did that maybe on purpose. <laughs> But working in art and art therapy and, and understanding that, that communication side of things, I think we'll see some surprises from, from her as well. What about future techniques and skills? Um, what do you think you would like to see for, for future, um, for the next, what, nine weeks? Is there anything that you'd like, oh, I can't wait to see if they challenge and do this technique. Have you got anything that you think might, might be good that you'd like to see? Well, what might be nice is to see something that maybe has a lot of fit in it. You know, they, I think it was last series they did, you know, a, a jacket. But yeah. I'd like to see, to see something that is really fit. So maybe, you know, a little black dress where you're not allowed to trim it. You know, you, you, there's no fuss, there's no bother, there's no frills. Just, just that, just a pure, a pure garment. Trousers, I don't think we see enough of trousers. They are tricky. Um, but uh, and maybe something that you have to incorporate, uh, maybe a, a certain kind of a trim or a certain work with rouleau, you know, just oh, adding, yeah. adding yeah. texture, adding dimension on. Um, they seem to program it though very, very well. So, <laughs> you know, I'm sure that whatever comes up, it's, you know, it's all going to be interesting. The researching of the program is, is terrific. <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, and uh, there, there, there is a lot of work clearly goes into it. So next week, then, we've had a heads up on what it is. It's summer oh. week, summer week. Right. Uh, beach, beach wear, or, or um, what does it say? Beach, um, beach attire. So it'll be interesting to see what, what it will be, S short and skimpy. Yes, yes. We'll have to see. And, of course, we'll... Maybe we'll be dealing with some swimwear, some some four-way stretch, you know. Ooh. So that can be very unruly. Um, you know, you'll have to put some tricks in to control yeah. it. Um, and maybe, um, hmm. Well, who knows? We'll just have to see. Well, indeed. Good old-fashioned well, terry cloth. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been lovely chatting to you. Our first episode of All Gathered Up. I've learned stuff already about um, a dance and gathers, and I hope it's been of use to, to our, our viewers, to you out there. Let us know in the comments. Carol is around. She will be commenting as well. So if you've got any specific questions, write them down, um, because uh, you've got an expert here to answer and to and to support and also if you've not checked out carol's youtube page please do that the links are below um and you're you're you've only just recently started so more videos are to come i presume you'll put all the stuff that we, we edit in here you're doing and putting up on your channel too that's right that's right everything will be the the, the full length version of these videos will be yeah. available and I just want to repeat what I said in the beginning is, you know, the reason I got involved with Savile Row, it's, you know, so early on is because I, I wasn't afraid to ask, you know? And so, so 
just follow that through. If you, you know, you want to know anything or anything about couture or tailoring, anything, however minor this is, just ask because everything about sewing, everything about building a garment is, is important and it all contributes, you know, to the build up to the, to the final piece. So oh, that's ask cool. away, I'm, I'm here. And especially because, as I know, uh, they don't say it sometimes in the patterns they assume. So wow. we've got someone here to help, which is wonderful over the ni next nine weeks. I can't wait, Carol. <laughs> yeah. well, Thank thanks very much. And I'll see you next week for Summer Week. See, see you next week. Indeed. Thanks, Bye-bye.